What's up guys? Today we are talking about what is the best welder for metal art and metal sculptures. This whole genre has caught a lot of traction with Pinterest and Instagram and people sharing these really creative uh, creations that they've made out of scrap metal and bolts and steel and all this cool stuff. And it really has become something a lot bigger than it was five years ago. And so there's a lot of people gaining interest who want to get into this, but they're not exactly sure what they need to buy because they're not a fabricator themselves. They don't have the tools at home. And so we made a basic guide kind of outlining everything that you'll need. And when it comes to the most important question, what welder should I buy? We're going to answer that question for you today. But really quick to start out. You're going to need a welder. You're going to need an angle grinder with some flat di flap discs and metal cutoff wheels, your basic safety equipment, and some scrap metal. That's literally all you need to kind of get started in this and start making creations. And then at that point, you can look at pictures and start getting inspiration and make what you want to make. But let's talk about the most important thing, the welder. When it comes to choosing a welder, you basically have two options that you need to consider, and that is buying a MIG welder or a flux core welder. The difference between these two welders is that a MIG welder is going to use solid wire and it's also going to have the hardware to hook up an external gas shielding gas tank. Now these external, external shielding glass tanks, I just want to show you what they look like real quick. That's what they look like. You'll oftentimes see these behind welders and the reason is, is that shielding gas protects the weld as you weld and what that will result in is a nice clean weld as you see it says mig there if you look at the weld underneath it it's nice and clean it's shiny there's very little spatter it's a nice clean weld okay but the downside is you have to use that external shielding gas and that normally costs more and the welders themselves cost a little bit more and there's a little more setup a lot of times for beginner fabricators, they get kind of scared when they hear, oh, well, I have to buy this really high pressure shielding gas and I have to hook it up. But I'm here to tell you it's not that big of a deal. You literally just have to go to your local welding shop or purchase a tank online and hook your machine up. It's very simple. It's very easy. And once it's hooked up, you can use that tank until it runs out. And then you take it to your local welding shop. They fill it up and you bring it back, hook it up, and you're good to go, okay? So MIG is definitely the number one choice because it gives you the cleanest welds and it's the easiest, it has the, less, the least amount of spatter. The cheaper option and definitely the less convenient option is buying a flux cord welder. Flux cord welders do not have the hardware to hook up shielding gases, so they only accept flux cord wire. Flux cord wire has its own shielding built into the core of the wire. And what that does is when you weld, you'll get a weld that looks just like this. You'll see there's a lot of shielding on the outside. That needs to be chipped off or use like a big wire wheel on a grinder to grind all that off and clean it up. So while this is a cheaper method and does not require shielding gas, your welds are going to look dirty and you're going to have to clean them. It's not a huge deal for most people, but one thing you need to keep in mind is that if you are using this method, your art pieces are going to have grind marks on them, okay? And some people don't like that because you're going to need to use a grinder to clean up your welds. You're going to see all those grind marks. Some people like that, some people don't, so just keep that in mind. It's definitely a cheaper option, but it's going to take a lot more work. Um, but, you know, some art pieces don't require a ton of welding. They just require small spot welds. And if that's the case, cleanup should be very easy. So it's really up to you what you want to use. When it comes to actually purchasing a welder for metal art, one of the great things is that you don't have to buy a really big expensive machine. A majority of the steel you're going to be working with is going to be quarter inch or less. So you can get away with buying a smaller machine. And also your welds are not structural most of the time. So they're not supporting a ton of weight. With that being said, something like the Hobart Handler 140 is the perfect option for anyone who's looking to get into metal art. Hobart as a brand in general is a very mid-range brand that gives you a lot of value for your money. They don't have a ton of bells and whistles, but they have really good performance for the price and will get you started for a lot less. Um, other notable brands like Lincoln and Miller are great machines. Don't get me wrong. They're fantastic, but they're going to cost you a little bit more expensive. And to the average user they're not going to be a whole lot better than the Hobart. So you're best off to just get a Hobart. These things last a very long time. You'll see them in people's shops everywhere. They're cost efficient. They have good parts availability, good customer support. They come with a five-year warranty from the factory, and they're just really good machines. Now, this specific model is a MIG. So if you're looking to do the MIG route, the Handler 140 is going to be what you want. We'll show you the uh, flux cord option here in a second. 
But if you're going to go the MIG route, this is the Handler 140. Now, with the Handler 140, you are going to need an external shielding gas tank. You can actually purchase these tanks online if you would like. This one right here is a 75% argon, 25% CO2. That is the standard welding gas that everyone uses. This one right here, you can have delivered, and it comes to your house full of gas. So you can just literally hook it up and start using it. And then when it runs out of gas, take it to your welding shop. They'll either exchange your tank or fill it for you, whatever they decide to do. Different shops are different. And uh, and then you can refill it. But it will last you a very long time, especially if you're just using it uh, here and there. You're not using it every day. It will last you a very long time. So if you decide to go the cheaper route and go for a flux cord machine that uses flux cord wire, the Hobart Handler 100 is perfect. Uh, you can get this thing for about 250 bucks. Super inexpensive. I mean, just a really cheap welder, but still made by Hobart. Still has that five-year warranty. Same quality. It's a really, really good machine for people who are starting out looking for a flux cord machine. It is rated at 3 16 but that's still plenty for any type of welding art that you're going to be doing. Very good machine, very inexpensive, and you really can't go wrong. Another great thing about Hobart machines is they do hold their value because they are a name brand. So if you get into this and you decide, you know, ah, this isn't really for me, I, I, I don't want to do this, or I kind of I have my fun and I'm ready to sell the machine, you can get a very large chunk of your money back out of this machine because Hobart is a very good brand. Okay, guys, I hope this video helped you guys out. If you have any questions at all, Feel free to post them in the comments and I will get back to them as soon as possible uh, to help you guys. All the products that I linked in this video will be in the video description. And if you do purchase from those links, we do get a small commission. So we say thank you very much for that. And that will help go toward the channel and to make our channel even bigger so that we can bring fabrication information to everyone. So thank you very much for that. We appreciate your guys' support and we hope this video is helpful. Any questions? Feel free to post them in the comments and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you guys. Thanks for watching and good luck with your metal art creations.